Let's discuss type 3 under mole concept. Calculation of number of molecules present in a given volume of a gas. Reminder, 1 mole is equal to Avogadro number. 1 mole is also equal to molar mass and 1 mole is also equal to 22.4 liter. In these questions, there will be a relation between volume and number. Let's see the first question. Calculate the number of molecules present in 1 liter of hydrogen. We know that 22.4 liter of hydrogen contain molecule equal to 6.022 into 10 raised to power 23. Then 1 liter of hydrogen will contain molecule 6.022 into 10 raised to power 23 divided by 22.4. If you work, you will get the value 2.69 into 10 raised to power 22. Let's see the second question. Calculate the number of molecules and atoms present in 11.2 liter of oxygen. In this question, we have to calculate molecules as well as the atoms which comprise the molecule. We know that 22.4 liter of oxygen will contain 6.022 into 10 raised to power 23 molecules. Then 11.2 liter of oxygen will contain 6.022 into 10 raised to power 23 divided by 22.4 into 11.2. If you work out, you will get 3.011 into 10 raised to power 23 molecules. Now we know that one molecule of oxygen has two atoms. So, 3.01 into 10 raised to power 23 molecules of oxygen will have 2 into 3.011 into 10 raised to power 23 equal to 6.022 into 10 raised to power 23 atoms. Let's discuss one MCQ under mole concept. Which one of the following will have largest number of atoms? 1 gram gold, 1 gram sodium, 1 gram lithium or 1 gram chlorine? Atomic masses are given, gold is 197U, sodium is 23U, lithium is 7U, chlorine is 35.5U. Now, how we will proceed with this? We know that 197 gram of gold will contain atom is equal to Avogadro number. So, 1 gram of gold will contain atom is equal to Avogadro number divided by 197. In case of sodium, 23 gram of sodium contain atoms equal to Avogadro number. 1 gram of sodium will contain atom equal to Avogadro over 23. 7 gram of lithium will contain atom is equal to Avogadro number. 1 gram of lithium will contain atom equal to Avogadro number divided by 7. For chlorine, 71 gram of chlorine will contain atoms is equal to Avogadro number. 1 gram of chlorine will contain atom is equal to Avogadro over 71. Now, from your knowledge of mathematics, it is very easy to predict that lithium is going to have the maximum number of atoms because the denominator is the lowest. I hope this is clear to everyone. So the answer is lithium. Let's discuss about percentage composition. Till now we were dealing with the number of particles that were present in a given sample. But sometime we require the information that what is the percentage of a particular element present in a given compound. Suppose in lab you are given with a new sample. The first question that should come into your mind is what is the formula of this compound? What are the elements of which it is composed of? And in what ratio the elements are present in the compound? If you are given with a known compound then the question that should come into your mind is that whether the sample which is given contains the same percentage of element as is present in the pure sample. That is, we can check the purity of a given sample. Now, the question arises how to calculate the percentage of elements. For this, we have the formula. The mass percentage of an element is given as mass of that element in the compound divided by molar mass of the compound into 100. Let's take the example of water. For example, the molar mass of water is 18.02 gram. Now, water is made up of two, L, two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. Let's first calculate the mass percentage of hydrogen. We'll, we'll calculate as 2 
because there are two atoms of hydrogen multiplied by the atomic mass of hydrogen divided by the molar mass into 100 if you work out you will get the value 11.18 now we calculate the mass percentage of oxygen the mass percentage of oxygen is the mass of oxygen divided by molar mass into 100 which work out which you will work out and you will get the value 88.79 so we have calculated in this question example the mass percentage of hydrogen as well as the mass percentage of oxygen now let's do one more example how to calculate the mass percentage of elements such as carbon hydrogen and oxygen which are present in ethanol we know the molecular formula of ethanol c2h5oh if we calculate the molar mass of ethanol that comes out to be 46.068 grams here i would like to tell you that the atomic masses should be taken as per the demand of the question for example here we can also take 12 but here in the book it is 12.01 so we can also take this 1.008 or we can also take as 1 it will be given in the question okay now the mass percentage of carbon will be how many carbons are there there are two carbons so 2 multiply by the mass of each mass of one carbon this will be 24.02 divided by the molar mass into 100 so if you will work out the mass percentage will be 52.14 percent the mass percentage of hydrogen this will be there are six hydrogen and the mass of one hydrogen will be 1.008 so the total mass will be 6.048 divided by the molar mass into 100 so this is the mass percentage of hydrogen that is 13.13 percent now the mass percentage of oxygen will be 16 that is the atomic mass of oxygen divided by the molar mass into 100 so this is the mass percent of oxygen that is 34.73 percent we'll be doing more numericals based on this let's see the definition of mass percentage it gives the mass of each element expressed as the percentage of total mass mass percentage of an element is equal to mass of that element in one mole compound divided by molar mass of the compound into 100 so let's see first question calculate the mass percentage composition of copper pyrite the copper pyrite has formula cufes2 molar mass of copper pyrite will be 63.5 that is atomic mass of copper plus atomic mass of iron that is 55.8 plus two atoms of sulfur are there and one atom has mass 32 so two atom will have mass 64 so that molar mass will be 183.3 now let us work out the mass percentage of each element first mass percentage of copper will be the atomic mass of copper divided by the molar mass into 100 which gives us 36.64 percent that is the percentage of copper in this compound copper pyrite is 36.64 percent then mass percentage of iron the atomic mass of iron is 55.8 divided by the molar mass into 100 this gives us 30.44 percent that is in copper pyrite the percentage of iron is 30.44 then mass percentage of sulfur will be 64 divided by the molar mass into 100 this gives us 34.91 percent that is in copper pyrite sulfur is uh, the percentage of sulfur is 34.91 We'll discuss more numericals let's see this question how much copper can be obtained from 100 gram of copper sulfate the atomic masses are given copper is 63.5 sulfur 32 and oxygen 60 16u the molar mass of copper sulfate comes out to be 159.5 gram now 159.5 gram of copper sulfate will give copper 63.5 and 1 gram of copper sulfate will give copper 63.5 over 159.5 and 100 gram of copper sulfate will give copper is equal to 63.5 divided by 159.5 into 100 this comes out to be 39.81 gram thus in 100 gram of copper sulfate there is 39.81 gram of copper now moving on to the next question calculate the percentage of water of crystallization in a sample of mohor salt 
so this is the formula of mohr salt uh, you are going to work with this salt in class 12 it is a double salt and six water molecules are the water of crystallization so we want to find out the percentage of this water of crystallization for that we need to find out first the molar mass of mohr salt if you work out you will get the molar mass to be 392 and percentage of water will be 108 which is the total mass of water divided by the molar mass into 100 this comes out to be 27.55% so water of crystallization is 27.55% okay let's start with a new concept empirical and molecular formula chemical formula is of two types empirical formula and molecular formula the empirical formula is the formula which gives the simplest whole number ratio of the atoms of various elements which are present in one molecule of the compound but the molecular formula is the formula which gives the actual number of atoms of various elements present in one molecule of the compound see molecular formula of hydrogen peroxide is h2o2 so this shows the actual number that there are two hydrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms but in empirical formula we get the simplest whole number ratio for example this formula shows that hydrogen and oxygen in hydrogen peroxide are present in the ratio of 1 is to 1 so the empirical the empirical formula of benzene now is ch but the molecular formula of benzene is c6h6 this gives you the actual number of carbon and hydrogen which are present in benzene the empirical formula just tells you the simplest whole number ratio the how you will get the simplest whole number ratio you just cancel and you will get that they in this benzene carbon and hydrogen are in the ratio of 1 is to 1 now let's see the relation between empirical and molecular formula empirical molecular formula is n multiplied by the empirical formula now how we can calculate this empirical formula by the knowledge of mass percentage we can calculate if we know the mass percentage of various elements we can calculate the empirical formula which we will do in the next class thank you for the numerical on empirical and molecular formula write the empirical formula of the compound having molecular formula these are the different molecular formulas so let's study one by one if the molecular formula is c6h6 this is benzene so molecular formula tells us the actual number of atoms which are present in the molecule the empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio so the simplest whole number ratio for this will be ch i hope this is clear let's see next c6h12 so the simplest whole number ratio will be 6 ones are 6 6 twos are 12 that is ch2 so this will be the simplest whole number ratio for if the molecular formula is n2o5 now there cannot be any simplest whole number ratio so the empirical formula is the same as the molecular formula n2o5 in case of h3po4 this is phosphoric acid so again the empirical formula is the same as the molecular formula in this c12h22o11 which is your table sugar the again the simplest whole number ratio cannot be worked out so the empirical formula remains the same as the molecular formula in case of c2h2 this is your acetylene uh, then here also the empirical the molecular formula is c2h2 the empirical formula will be ch simplest whole number ratio okay now this is b2h6 this is your diborane the simplest whole number ratio will be bh3 in case of sodium carbonate the molecular formula and empirical formula are going to remain the same thank you